So, as you may recall, the other day, AUKUS was announced, right? This uh, new uh, military partnership between Australia, the United Kingdom, and the United States. And one of the main uh, pillars of this partnership is Australia will receive 12 nuclear submarines. Okay, they will be built in, in Adelaide by the US and the UK. Okay, and I want to point out something about this, which I don't think anyone has, has mentioned much. Do you know how everyone has been screaming about Iran enriching uranium to 60%? Right, they've been saying, oh my God, they're going to build a nuclear bomb, and this is so dangerous, even though Iran does not have a nuclear weapons program. So that's 60% for civilian use. Australia is going to receive nuclear submarines. Nuclear submarines are, are not diesel-powered, as the name suggests. They're nuclear-powered, right? They, they run on um, high-enriched uranium. So the uranium needed to power them is 90%. 90%, which is weapons-grade, effectively, right? It's very close to weapons-grade. And no one seems to care, right? And Iran and Australia are both signatories of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, okay? And no one seems to care. Very weird. Both of these things, actually, are permitted under the uh, NPT. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you are a signatory of the NPT, you are allowed to have a civilian nuclear program. You are also allowed to use um, nuclear energy. Let me read this to you over here. Here we go. So the, the NPT does not prohibit non-nuclear weapon states from non-explosive military uses of nuclear material. The principal example being the operation of naval propulsion reactors. So that's another way of saying a nuclear submarine. So technically speaking, Iran has the right to a nuclear civilian program under the NPT. And Australia also has the right to use nuclear submarines under the NPT. But for some reason, people are only making a fuss about Iran. And the thing that is so crazy is that under the JCPOA, so under the Joint uh, Comprehensive Plan of Action, and also the additional protocol, Iran had to limit its uranium enrichment to 3.67% over 15 years. And they did this. This is verified by the IAEA inspectors from the International Atomic Energy Agency in Vienna. Uh, you know, under the additional protocol, they could go anywhere they like. They can do surprise inspections in any facility, right? I think of that. Do you think... Does the United States allow anyone to do that in their country? Can inspectors just come and randomly check a nuclear uh, um, facility? Does Israel allow that? <laughs> so th that's crazy, right? And they also have cameras running 24-7. And even now, even now, while the, the talks are on hold to get the United States back in the JCPOA, Iran is still recording everything, but they're keeping it in a black box. So the idea behind that is that it's, it's leverage, right? It's, it's pr diplomatic pressure. It's like, listen, you lift the sanctions, you get the United States back into the JCPOA, you, you return to what we agreed on in 2015, or we delete everything on the memory cards. So you can't watch it, but if you lift sanctions, we'll give you the memory cards and you can verify everything. And the IA uh, uh, director general himself is the one swapping the cards. He just uh, went to Tehran a few days ago and swapped them out. And they've been doing this since February, okay? Because in December, in December 2020, the Iranian parliament, the Mejlis, voted to uh, get rid of the additional protocol. Not completely, but just in part. And why did they do this? Because Israel assassinated one of their nuclear scientists. And on top of that, they, they did it in a, in a three-month uh, time window. So the idea was that, okay, well, in three months, the elections in the, the United States will be over. Whoever wins will have time to re-enter the nuclear deal, especially if it's Biden, because he says he's going to enter the, the nuclear deal again, right? He said that. So the idea was that, well, from December, if we wait three months, that gives Biden time to get inaugurated, right? Because he had already won at this point. Remember, the assassination is November 27, excuse me. So we, we already knew it's Biden. Uh, and, and he'll be inaugurated, and then he can go back into the JCPOA. So you can see every step of the way, Iran is, is being extremely patient. I mean, I, I, I'm not re even sure how they do it, honestly, because I think uh, many would have lost patience already. But the idea was like, let's wait. And they didn't do it, right? So February came and the United States was still not back in the JCPOA. So then they decided to, to have this um, one month agreement, which they've been extending every month since with the IAEA. 
which is that, look, we're not letting you have a live stream anymore um, of the footage, but we'll keep recording it and you can have it if you lift the sanctions and the JCPOA is resurrected. So, you know, the whole time Iran has been abiding by the JCPOA. There's so many articles, there's so many uh, announcements um, and bulletins by the IAEA saying this, that Iran has been keeping to 3.67%. The only reason they got up to 60% is because of Trump, right? And And... Even a year, for one year, from May 2018 to May 2019, after Trump left the JCPOA, Iran stuck to the original um, protocols. It, it didn't change anything. It stayed at 3.67%, the same number of centrifuges. Nothing changed. After a year, they were like, okay, you're still not back in the JCPOA. So now we are going to increase the number of centrifuges, and we will also enrich uranium to 20%, right? And then... When Trump killed, uh, when he murdered General Soleimani, and then when uh, uh, Dr. Mohsen Fakhrizadeh was killed by the Mossad and the, and the Americans in November, you know, every step of the way, Iran has been responding tit for tat. You do this, we're going to in increase centrifuges. You do this, we're going to enrich uranium to 60%. So forth. So the only reason Iran is at 60% is because of the United States. Otherwise, they were following the, the protocols. Th this is an undisputable fact. And yet no one seems to mention this because the way to cover the nuclear talks and the Iran nuclear deal in the mainstream media is to say that Iran is building a bomb, even though there's absolutely no proof for this. It's to say that Iran refuses to continue the talks, like always portray Iran as the party that is unwilling to cooperate, even though the United States left the deal. The United St States never implemented the deal in full, even under Obama when, when you know he crafted it. The United States made sure that Iran would respond by limiting uh, cooperation under the additional protocol, that they would increase enrichment um, of uranium, the number of centrifuges. They made sure of this. But apparently, Iran is not cooperating, even though the United States still hasn't re-entered the JCPOA. It's incredible, right? How they, they twist, they, they just turn the whole world upside down. They give you an entirely fucking different version of events. It's really, really incredible. So... Just going back to AUKUS, I don't see anyone, anyone, whining about Australia receiving such nuclear technology. And you could have people who argue, well, you know, Australia is not the one who's going to build them. The Americans and the, and the British are going to come and build them for them. <laughs> Look, man, there's no way on earth Australia or any country can maintain a fleet of nuclear submarines without a transfer of technology. So, some transfer of technology is occurring here, whether you like it or not. Otherwise, how could they maintain the submarines? It's impossible, right? These things, I mean, any, any nuclear material, this is something that you will handle for decades. So some transfer of technology was taking place here, okay? And I put it to you in another way. Imagine if China, for example, or Russia wanted to give Iran nuclear submarines. You think they would shut up? The, the same, just apply the same logic. Imagine Russia said, just imagine, Russia says they're going to go to Tehran, they're going to go to Iran and build the submarines for Iran. Iran will not, uh, you know, they will not receive any of the technology, but they will have the submarines. You think they would shut up about that? You know goddamn well they would raise hell. Iran doesn't even have a nuclear weapons program, and they accuse it of building a nuclear bomb. So what would they do in that case? So there's a clear double standard here. This is undeniable. There is a clear fucking double standard, right? It's okay for, you know, Western countries to transfer nuclear, power, uh, nuclear technology for military, military application. Nuclear submarines do not shoot nuclear missiles or, or uh, ICBMs. The nuclear-powered submarines, right, in this case. But nonetheless, they are, you know, they're for military use. Their application is strictly military. They're not, you know, Australia is not receiving 12 nuclear submarines to go hand out candy. It's to intimidate China. It's a military application. Okay, Iran has no military application with the uranium or with the uh, nuclear program that it has. It, does, it just doesn't have one. We would know by now because the IAEA can go anywhere they like. They, they, we, know, we would know. That it, there's no way that Iran could build a nuclear weapon without the whole world knowing about this. So there is a, an unbelievable double standard here in the coverage about the Iran nuclear deal, in the coverage about Iran's nuclear program, in the coverage about AUKUS. Everyone seems fine with it, right? And even the people who are criticizing it, they are correctly criticizing it because it's antagonizing China. It's creating uh, more risk in the Indo-Pacific, not less, like they claim. This is not peace and, and stability. What are you doing there in the first place? What is the UK doing there? They're antagonizing China. So that is a risk in of itself. But on top of it, you can see the clear double standard.
this, this transfer of nuclear technology for military application, uh, they would raise hell if it was happening with Iran. But with Australia, who cares? Whatever, you know? <laughs> unbelievable, honestly. It's, it's really unbelievable. So I just wanted to point this out because, you know, um, it, it's, ve it's very, very important to point it out. And uh, once again, you, you, you see, once again, you see the double standard with, uh, with the coverage and the logic also that they apply, you know. Um, it's not just about media coverage, it's also the governments, you know. I mean, I, I, I haven't heard a single Israeli official uh, uh, complaining that Australia is receiving nuclear submarines. Hmm? I haven't heard Netanyahu or Bennett open their mouths about that. <laughs> Maybe they did, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I, mean, I haven't heard anyone open their mouths about it. The only, person, the only people complaining are the French. N not because they don't want to antagonize China or because they're against Australia receiving nuclear technology for military use. They just wanted to make the money off of this endeavor. That's all. <laughs> oh man, the hypocrisy is unbelievable.